pretty cool. It's a, uh, well, it's an award, a reward, but it's also an obligation. So we'll see if any one of those six guys can play up to the standards that a lot of people think they can achieve. I, I'm pretty sure they will be able to, but time will tell. We'll know in late November. Let's say that we have some pieces of a defense that could be pretty good. We don't have the whole thing done quite yet. Witnessed by the total number of yards we gave up against Cal Poly, 575 rushing. And even in the last game against Weber State, we still surrendered too many points and too many yards. Against Southern Utah at home, we gave up uh, almost uh, a thousand yards passing. So, on both sides, on both aspects of defense, rush, rush defense, pass defense, miles to go yet. Some great individuals, some very good coaching, but it has to coalesce now. Do you think ISU is getting some respect now from what they, from what you guys accomplished last year? Well, from where we've come, not just last year, but geez, where we're at now, it's it's very cool. And I think everybody should be mindful of the fact that the, the struggle wasn't just on the field; it was off the field, primarily in our behavior and in our academic standing. Because we're more mature about those two aspects, football is followed uh, rather than letting football be the horse that leads the cart. We made football be the cart, and the horses that lead the cart are academics and social responsibility. And to that end, we have a very mature, mature football team. We'll certainly be able to keep any accolades and awards that we get here in August in perspective. Um, talking about quarterbacks, you guys have a transfer coming in? Well, it's, a, it's an ongoing deal for us a little bit. It's a good story. Kevin Yost came in four years ago and started for two years as a junior college transfer. And then, of course, Justin Harris came in and started for two years after that, also a junior college transfer. We have a junior college transfer on campus, Michael Sanders, who should be the heir apparent. And the only reason for that is that I believe Tanner Guller can be an outstanding quarterback. But I do not want to savage a kid's career by letting him or making him become the quarterback as a redshirt freshman. So we'll let those two guys battle. Tanner can show that he's ready or not ready. And Michael can show he is the man or not the man through the first couple of weeks of August. And then we'll sit down the Monday before the opening game and make a definitive decision and let everybody know exactly who's going to throw the ball, uh, be the starter coming out of the out of the huddle against, <laughs> off the sideline against Black Hills. How important is it to have that quarterback competition now going into the season? I don't like it. I don't like to have competition at uh, really any spot preseason. You know, we're not like an yeah. NFL team. We don't have a long camp. We don't have a bunch of preseason games. We really want to be, be defined at every position. And fortunately, center guard, tackle, tight end, wide out, running back on offense or set. On defense, pretty much every position is set also. So many returning starters. The only issue is can we find a replacement for Justin Harris at quarterback? And for the love of God, can we find a punter? Because our punter, who was the guy who was slated to be our starting punter, blew his ACL this summer working out. So we're just not going to punt. So open tryouts? More than, more than beyond <laughs> open tryouts. Anybody that has any willingness can be our punter. And do you know who's going to punt? Who cares? Can you see how happy I am? Well, I, that's a good thing. You can go to the roll it, punt. It's a, we go back to roll punt, which means that we just need somebody to be able to punt the ball over the line of scrimmage and let it fall where it might fall. Is it possible Tommy Jewell could be that guy? Uh, it could be Tommy Jewell. It could also be Zach Johnson, our kicker. Who, uh, the, the hard part about being a roll punter is that those guys aren't used to catching the snap. And Andy Burdenshaw can rock that thing backward. And what will happen is it can start concentrating on the kick and he will drop the ball. And so I got to find a guy who I'm confident can catch the snap before he makes the kick, and it's a it's a really cool deal because it's so unconventional. Uh, I, I look forward as a coaching as a as a as a kick team's coach to the challenge of being able to at least have some modicum of some punting game. But uh, it'll be a severe challenge for us because the loss of Sean is was unprecedented. Is it kind of uneasy for you not having a quarterback? Do you feel uneasy going into fall camp? No, I, I think uh, we have a really good grasp of what, we, what we're going to do offensively, how we're going to do it. Um, you know, we did a, we've done a great job with Don Bailey as our offensive coordinator up to this point. Uh, Sheldon Cross and the rest of our offensive staff is pretty knowledgeable and pretty savvy as to what we want. Uh, the quarterbacking situation will depend on his ability to be able to perform at the level we want to perform. And we have to make everything else adapt to his abilities, whoever that guy is. And we cannot put so much pressure on him that they can step on the gas from the first play to the last play and expect the same results that Arias had. So uh, there will be a little trial and error early. Uh, and obviously, that part I like because I never like to be good early. Really. We need to be good late. We need to be good in November because November's 
Big Man Month, and that's when we win games, win championships in, in November.